Good evening and welcome to Everything Matters, Tales from the Periodic Table. Tonight, in our second part, we're going to, uh, I'm going to welcome Ed Kirshner, who's standing here next to me. He's going to talk about how he makes glass and plasma sculptures, and his credits are, I don't want to mess them up, so I'm going to read them here. So Ed has taught glass and gas plasma workshops in the United States and in Asia and Europe, and he's on the faculty of the Crucible Fire Arts School in Oakland. Now, is that a cool name or what? The Crucible Fire Arts School, I want to go there. And the glass furnace in Turkey. He's also a trustee and treasurer of the Museum of Modern, uh, Museum of Neon Art, Mona in Los Angeles, and he's going to talk, talk to us about all these kind of beautiful plasma sculptures that <clears throat> we've all come to know and love. Ed. Well, thank you. <laughs> so, so a couple of decades ago, I made the mistake of hanging around the Exploratorium too much, and there were things that really intrigued me, uh, a lot of them being uh, they had plasma and neon and it, and other kinds of high voltage discharge and all of that. So it really got me into looking at it. Besides, I love the Aurora Borealis. So I kept thinking, what can I do to get an Aurora Borealis? It's a little big to de deal with myself. So I figured, you got to put it in a bottle. So luckily, there was a school that taught glass near where I was. And I just went there and learned all about glass and vessels and how to put these gases inside and then how to light them up. And of course, um, there was a guy named Tesla who put together a long time ago all of the basic electronics that you need to make these gases ionize and light up. So that was kind of how I got into it. But Backing up, what is plasma? Well, plasma is the fourth state of matter. And what are the, the states of matter we have are, basically, we have solids, we have liquids, and we have gas. And by the way, those are extremely rare in the universe. Almost all of the regular matter is in the form of plasma, which is an ionized gas. And one of the features of ionized gas, I can't quite get the technical aspect of it, is it gives off light. And that was what we wanted to work with. But in any case, we could start here. So within the, oh, back one, yeah. So all the light that you see, almost all the light that you see in the universe is a plasma light, a galaxy, whatever you, this is jumping ahead, but what the heck, the sun, the aurora, my favorite, how do we put it in a bottle? Lightning, but look at the picture in this case. What in this picture is plasma? Well, we see lightning, uh, the buildings. What are in the building? It's fluorescent lights. That is a plasma, even though it's using phosphors. A lot of the street lights, mercury vapor, those are plasma lights. And, what are, and the red ones, well, where you see the red ones, by and large, that's the neon. So I wanted to take some of these and put them together into forms and sculpture and so on, because I had a long, long, long time ago, I had some background in that. And I decided, how do I, in effect, encapsulate this? Uh, oh, by the way, the pieces I will show all are only the pieces I use that have some mixture of neon in them, because there is very, very different forms, shapes, colors that you can get by various mixings of the gases and the, and the different way they work within the geometries, I'll show you. So here was sort of an attempt to get sort of a, a, a more sensual lightning form within a glass shape.
and I'll just go through these. Just, just the idea of using forms with the light and try to perceive all of these as being dynamic. It's hard to see. Some of them will show and you'll see a piece over there that is that way. Okay. This is just, you know, also the idea of finding common glass, uh, which I like doing because even though I studied glass, I found out very quickly that either you're born with the ability to do it or it takes 25 years to learn and I was already 55 and I wasn't born with it. So I found ways to put glass together and I'll get into that later. And these are just basically the old, the, the blue coffee cups stacked up and then worked so that there is now the plasma lightning on the inside. By the way, these ones that look sort of white actually have about a quarter, 10% to, to a quarter of neon in them, but it's mostly xenon in those. And just technically the reason the, the neon is used actually to smooth the lightning so it isn't so lightning-like. Then the idea is to combine it in sculptural form. So here we go in a V8 engine block and in bottles with it in it. And these are Harvey Bristol cream sherry bottles. This is a very good piece because you have to drink the sherry first. Oh, a car using, in effect, blue beer bottles for one. Nut trays for the wheels. And a guess as to what the exhaust. Some, some people see it as the headlights, but the exhaust. Ah, champagne flutes. So from, this is very hard stuff to get, crate and barrel. All of these have some neon in them, even though you're getting the different colors. Sorry, it's a little shaky. It's just sort of an iPhone video, so. Give you an idea of Again, each one of these is, we use a, what's called an electronic Tesla coil that produces high voltage, high frequency, very low ampage. These begin to look more like when you start seeing the orange and the reds, and you know for sure there's the neon in them, and this is the series that would be doing that. So the flaming effects. And these different pieces. There was, there was one that seems missing here, but I'm not sure. Neon with other gases. Within the same gas mixture, you go from orange to green, and that has to do actually with the geometry of the glass. I was very surprised. A lot of the light and form has to do with geometry. The spacing between the surface is changes, actually makes the, the, the gas change color when it glows. Is working in my uh, little studio with the various gases, doing some tests on a piece to see what different pure, this one will be pure neon, just to see by just varying slightly the pressure of the gas, we'll see what happens. So that's another variable that you can work with to change the forms. The geometry that comes out is not in the glass. 
It is not in electronics. It is actually happening at the molecular level. There is some type of feedback loop going on at the molecular level that clicks into a geometric form. I relate it to something like chaos. You know, chaos looks random, but the difference between a, a random system and many chaotic systems are that specific places within the chaotic system, it actually clicks into self-organization. And that is what's happening, I believe, in terms of the, the forms that, that I'm getting. These are highly, highly tuned in terms of the gas, the gas mixture, the gas pressure, the, elect the, the, the potential of, elect of electricity, and the geometry of the glass. All of those have to be just right or you don't get this. By the way, you do not know what's going to come out before you do it. You may have a general idea, but every single one is somewhat different. Just the general idea, like any chaotic system, a very, very, very small change in the initial condition can have enormous effects. And that is what's happening in many of these patterns. Notice that the, this is neon, but you're getting the neon at the tips, but you're still getting blue, but it's still the neon gas. So neon does not always, it comes out that only in a certain geometry and pressure does you, do you get its primary red color. That if you go into more volume, if you go into slightly less potential, it can be sort of a, a, a misty blue. This is just one in a um, sort of a large kaleidoscope effect. Just another pattern that you can get from it. That's the piece over here. Then when you, if you really tune it, tune it just right, you can get some very fun patterns and shapes and dynamics. This is, again, mostly, ne this is mostly neon with traces of xenon. In other words, the, the way you play with it is, is again, you use trace to do, to, and shape to get the different patterns and pressure. When I say pressure, all the pressure I use is below atmosphere. We prefer not to have them blow up. That's the major reason. Now, to get some other kinds of glass, some, you, there are certain forms that are very, very difficult to use, to do, and to make. So I have an associate over in Austria who does scientific glass and makes the various forms for me. Again, that is self-organized geometry. Um, also, it's, it, is dynamic. It will tend to turn very slowly, depending on the space it's in. It's so sensitive that in some spaces it won't turn, in some spaces it will turn one way, some places another, and sometimes it changes by the number of people in the room and the humidity. It's, it is very, very highly tuned. And I wish I knew how to get it each time. It is what it is. It's about a three foot uh, double. Oh, by the way, whenever you see the patterns, it's, it's like a thermos. It's a double wall glass. It's pinched. And it's a double wall glass. That's the way the, these patterns are formed.
a little shaky. Whoops, jumped ahead. So working with the scientific glass, this associate in uh, Austria, band Weinmeier, does these beautiful jellyfish. Um, those are, the larger one is a meter, it's three feet long. And the heads we designed so that it has that geometric pattern. Now, working with what's called studio glass, which is a softer glass, which is soda lime glass, the other glass is scientific glass, is borosilicate like Pyrex. Uh, this is using a very, very fine tool to make the glass form. <laughs> What I'm doing is making a cherry, maraschino cherry that then lights up with the, the energy coming through the glass of the pit. It, the, the frequency it's at is just below radio frequency and it's actually transmitting through the glass and incorporating it in the sculpture. Another blown piece with a flame-like form. And just a large jalapeno. Fiery jalapeno. This is a four-foot tower and Take, what is it made of? It's made of flower pots, glass ones from Crate and Barrel. It would be pretty tough to blow that one. So what I did, and I'll go from here, is in order to do that, I developed a glass solder. So I can solder glass together into all different forms without losing the shape, because normally it has to be fused. And the, it's very hard to keep the shape of the glass. So I invented a glass solder for putting, again, wine carafes from Crate and Barrel, which are then, in effect, which are then done in the kiln. So the solder melts at a lower temperature than the glass, and then you can get, and you can just stack them, and then you can get your form. So it's about a four foot column, which then has the plasma within it. And other forms that you can put together with different types of plasma. You begin to see here that the glass is blue. The glass is not blue. Interestingly, in the same way that UV makes fluorescence in neon tubes glow, UV makes the, the um, lead irons in crystal glow blue. And it's a very nice effect. Won't do it in almost any other glass. A little from uh, this one would be Pottery Bond, little uh, apparent, a uh, 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 little jar in crystal jar put together. Another version of it. So apothecaries are nice little shapes to use. Then at the Crucible, we did a fire opera uh, and did an apothecary scene where we used various ones together. And working over in Austria, my glass guy, before he started doing this work, his prime business was making 40,000 schnapps glasses a year. So he's now doing something a little more interesting. But the schnapps that goes in it is great, and that was a nice place to work. So <laughs> thank you. And if there are any questions. <laughs>